Hello, my name is Mike McGlone. I'm a curriculum specialist with NASA's Aerospace Education Services Project, and I'd like to share with you today some of the activities and content from NASA's Summer of Innovation Lesson Plans. Today I'd like to share with you an overview of the activities for the Points of Light Lesson Plan. In the Points of Light Lesson, there are four activities to share with your students. The first activity I'd like to share is count your lucky stars. In this activity, you are presented with the question, how many stars are in this image? To find the answer, we will use the sampling method to estimate the stars. Using the counting square, we will randomly drop the square on the field and count the stars with more than 50% in the square, and repeat this several times. After three to five trials, we can average the results and multiply by the number of squares in the star field to get our estimate. In the Hubble Deep Field activity, we will use similar techniques to count your lucky stars, but with actual images from the Hubble Space Telescope. This activity can be done online as linked from the lesson plan, or you can print out the images to use with your students. The Hubble Deep Field image should generate questions from your students such as how many objects are there, what types of objects do we see, and many more. The Hubble Deep Field image can help our students answer these questions using simple techniques and help us answer one of the major misconceptions that students have, that all the points of light in the sky are stars. In reality, there are many different objects in the sky, galaxies, nebulas, and other cosmic structures. The Hubble Deep Field image is composed of data from four different cameras. These four cameras are labeled here as cameras A, B, and C, plus the planetary camera, but we will not use a planetary camera in the activity. To determine the number of objects, we use negative images from the Hubble cameras that have been divided into a grid. I am using camera A for our example. Looking at this negative image from camera A, we can randomly select three grid squares and count the objects seen in each selected square. Then average the number of objects counted in the three squares. Then multiply by the 12 squares in the image to get an estimate for the entire camera image. And finally, multiply by the three cameras and you will get an estimate for the number of objects in the Hubble Deep Field. How close will you and your students be to the scientist's estimate? Stories in the Sky is an activity that allows you and your students to learn about constellations and make your own stories about what you might see in the night sky. You can use the directions in the lesson to build your own planetarium with plastic sheeting and duct tape as shown in the image and have students create their own constellations, such as the Constellation Shuttle. An alternative to the planetarium is to use a piece of felt and plastic stars to have students create constellations. Have students randomly place the stars on the felt and then look for a pattern and write a story about their constellation. The final activity, light pollution, ties in with the annual globe at night activity that occurs in the spring. During this activity, students survey the number of visible stars to determine the amount of light pollution in their region and can compare the results to student observations around the world. Check out the website for news and information about the next global opportunity and the results from previous observations. I hope you will use these activities with your students. Whether you're in the classroom, after school program, or planning for a family star party, you can use these activities to help youth observe the night sky. Good luck.